On this uh, magnetic mat, I have a series circuit, and we're going to use this series circuit to demonstrate how to perform a voltage drop test. A voltage drop test is one of the best tests to be able to determine um, where a fault is in, in an electrical circuit. So I have two meters here. So this meter here on the left and this meter on the right. You can do this exercise with one meter, but I wanted to be able to do a good comparison between the two um, on each side. So this meter on the right, I have these little white heat shrink uh, components on here in this white level, just to make sure that we don't get loose track of which meter is making which measurement. So I'm going to turn my circuit on, and the first thing when I'm trying to diagnose a circuit, first of all, this, this circuit is completely functional. The first thing that you should do when um, trying to diagnose an electrical circuit is we want to measure the, the source voltage. So I'm going to come here to the, the battery and uh, it's good practice to um, keep your meter leads in the correct polarity. So that means the red meter lead on the positive side of the circuit and the black meter lead on the negative side of the circuit. It's possible, and I've talked to, to several technicians who have encountered this, um, that the battery got charged uh, in reverse. Maybe the battery is completely depleted and someone had reversed the, the jump pack or, or the charging station to be able to charge the battery. So a battery with a uh, the polarity in the, in the opposite is what it's supposed to be will cause a lot of problems in an electronic circuit. So just get in the habit of always going red on positive and black lead on the negative side of the circuit. So we see a little bit of a discrepancy here. Uh, the quality of this meter uh, compared to this meter is this is probably superior as far as accuracy, but they're 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 close enough. And so we're going to treat this as a 12 12 volt circuit. So that's our source, and that's something that we want to keep track of as we move our way throughout the circuit. So to perform a voltage drop test, the first thing that I want to do is I want to take my red meter lead and it's going to be on the closest side to the battery positive. So if I was checking this fuse right here, the voltage drop of this fuse, my red meter lead would go here on the left because that is the closest to the positive terminal, and my black leader would go on the right. Once again, this just helps with the polarity uh, to in ensure that there's not, a, not an issue with that. So what we're seeing here is we're seeing this value of 0.000, .000 volts DC. What a voltage drop test is doing, it's essentially a way to measure dynamic resistance. The resistance that's in the circuit when the current is flowing through the circuit. So even though I'm not on the omega symbol measuring resistance, I'm, I'm inferring the resistance of the device based on this voltage value. So a zero voltage value helps me know that there is very little resistance in this fuse right here. Now I could take my meter and I could disconnect this and I could measure, and this is what a lot of people end up doing, and I could measure the resistance of this fuse. So I'm going to measure from there to there, and I get a resistance value of 0 0.2 ohms. So we could argue that that is a low resistance value. The problem is, is inside this meter, there's a nine volt battery and the meter when it's measuring resistance is only outputting a small amount of voltage. So let's actually measure that. So I'm going to pull this back here. So this I'm going to measure with resistance and I'm going to change this meter just to measure volts DC. So I'm going to connect my red meter lead here and my red meter lead here. So we can see by this meter that it tells us that this this meter is outputting 2.770 volts um, from the, uh, the, the multimeter. And then on this side, this measurement doesn't matter a lot, but this is essentially the impedance of the meter and the leads combined to be about 10 mega ohms. So this output is a lot less than this value right here, not to mention the capacity. If you imagine the size of a nine volt battery, that's a fairly small, battery and its capacity to output the energy that's stored inside it is significantly less, less than, for instance, a vehicle's battery. So this measurement is not 
very helpful measuring for resistance. I like to, to talk uh, when I'm teaching um, this basic meter operation. I like to let, let people know that in, in all reality, when I'm measuring this, what I'm determining is, is this open? Is this circuit open right now? The problems that I have is, like we just saw, this is only putting 2.3 volts through this part of the circuit. It's possible, especially on um, an LED uh, and other semiconductors, that that's going to completely uh, have a significant impact on um, the, the voltage is going to have a significant impact on the value of the resistance, right? How much, how much uh, resistance is through this component. The second factor uh, that, that we're determining here is we don't know, right? We don't know how much resistance this should be. Some manufacturers may specify uh, a certain amount of resistance. Maybe they say it, as long as it's less than 50 ohms, that, that, that means it's okay. But I want you to approach it uh, in a better way that I'll show you how voltage drop is going to allow us to utilize the vehicle battery or this battery instead of the battery that's found on the multimeter. So let's put our fuse back in place. So my voltage drop measurement, and, and most manufacturers, if they haven't published this, they have like a, a, a typical standard, um, somewhere around 0.5 volts, which that would be pretty high, but uh, th that's an indication that that type of voltage drop is, is okay. So let's get our meters back in position. So uh, here we have this on volts DC now, and we're measuring that dynamic resistance. We're looking at what is the resistance, and, and we're making a, a calculation or determining that based on this voltage drop measurement. The other important thing, so we talked about the polarity. The other important thing when performing a voltage drop measurement is that current has to be flowing through the circuit. Okay. So it's not a big deal right here when I have, when I'm measuring something that has very little resistance, but if something has resistance, and we'll look at that uh, later on, um, but when something has resistance, if current's not flowing through there, then this, this is not helping us. So we need to have the circuit in the on position. It's a good practice to have the red lead on the positive side, the most positive side of the component. So this measurement has now told me that there's very little resistance in the fuse part of this circuit. I'm gonna move now to my wire. So here I'm gonna be measuring my wire. And as expected, the wire should have very little resistance in the circuit. This voltage drop measurement is helping me identify, yep, there's very little resistance right there. I wanna make sure to check my uh, switch as well. So here's my latching switch. So this latching switch is telling me I have, this measurement is telling me that in the latching switch, I have very little resistance. I can then come here to this splice left. And this, in this case, it's just used as a wire, but same scenario, very low resistance. Okay. And now we're going to look at two different things. So we're going to look at this, this LED and compare it to this LED. So if I put my multimeter lead here, Remember now the positive side, if I follow this, trace this around, the positive side, this is the most positive side, and this is the, the least positive side, so the, the negative side, okay? So I'm measuring a voltage drop there, and then I'm gonna take my other meter, I'm gonna put my red lead here on the right side, and my left lead here on the, the left side, my black lead on the left side. Okay, so we're seeing two different values here. We see here on this LED right here, this one is dropping 8.03. Let's just call that eight volts. So this is dropping eight volts. A voltage drop is an indication of resistance. So this LED has resistance, some level. Everything has some resistance, but this has some of the most resistance. Wherever the voltage drops the most, that's where the most resistance is. This right LED, we can see we're dropping about four volts. So it's half as many volts as the, the left LED. So we can, we can actually calculate that, but just looking at it, we can say that this has half as much resistance as this does. So this has the most resistance. This has half as much resistance. Okay, now the voltage will drop wherever it is in the, in the circuit, wherever the resistance is the most. 
the position of that resistance is irrelevant. So let's unplug this or disconnect the meter leads and I'm gonna move this LED here and this LED here and I make the same connection and then when we measure this what we should expect here is that now this one is 4 volts and this one is 8 volts. So this is very clear that it does not matter where the resistance is in the circuit the voltage will drop wherever the resistance is the most. The energy that's created in the battery is converted. The most part of most of the energy is converted over right there to, to, to move through that LED. You also might notice that eight volts here and four volts here equals the amount of voltage coming from the battery. And that's a very important rule. We'll always have voltage drop has to drop. I have to drop all the voltage between uh, the positive and negative terminal of the battery in the circuit while it's operating. Let's switch this off and notice now that's not going to tell us anything. So once again, very critical to have the circuit on. If I was performing a voltage drop test on, for instance, a horn switch, a horn switch is momentary, right? You push it and you got to hold it to keep, keep it honking. So if I was doing a voltage drop test on a horn switch, I'd have to be depressing that horn the entire time. Most scan tools, factory and uh, aftermarket scan tools, you can go into the, um, the module that controls that device and you can command it to be always on. And so um, you wouldn't have to necessarily be holding the switch. But if you can't, then that's what you'd have to do while you were performing this measurement. Okay, so I'm going to um, now set a fault and um, I'm just gonna pick a random spot. Now you'll know right now where the fault is being set. Um, However, we're going to use our multimeter to be able to find that fault. And so I'm going to set this to have some high resistance, this yellow wire. And uh, you'll be performing some exercises in your lessons that will help you to do, do the, practice this same very, very same thing. But now I've introduced some resistance somewhere else in the circuit. So something important has happened here. This LED isn't even illuminated anymore. And this one is full, uh, is half, maybe half bright. Okay, I'm going to come and I'm going to check my voltage drop right at the load. Almost always, especially on a vehicle, it's the easiest to get to where the load is. So think of a tail light or a horn. It's pretty hard to get to a switch on this magnetic mat. Um, we set it up so that it's fairly easy to see what's happening, but I want you to get in the practice of thinking where is the best place for me to start measuring. So I would always measure the source voltage. That's the first thing that I would do and then measure at the load itself. And so here we see that this side is 0.5. So when we get to the circuit, it's possible we don't we don't know that, hey, this one drops 4 volts and this one drops 8 volts, right? When you're first introduced to the circuit, you don't know the number that it's supposed to be. But what we do know is if I add this up, 3 volts and 0.5 volts, that's 3.5 volts. And I still I need to drop the total of 12. So somewhere else I'm dropping the, the voltage because all of it has to drop. So remember or memorizing the number, that's not a thing you're going to know, but you should know that the load is where the voltage should drop, right? The voltage shouldn't drop at wires or very little voltage. Voltage shouldn't drop at switches, fuses. Very little of voltage should drop. The majority of that should always be occurring here at the loads. Okay, so what do I do next? So I'm going to start by testing, uh, performing the voltage drop that we just did. So we're going to come here. And remember, I'm going to go positive, uh, red lead closest to the positive side of the circle, and then black lead here. So we're on this meter. I'm, I kept this meter right here. So there we have a zero volt condition. And then I can just keep moving down my circuit like this. Okay, and here we see That we're dropping 8.43 so once I got in there to be able to actually test that we can see that we're dropping 8.4 volts there 3 volts here and 0.5 volts here so now I know that this component is the thing that is the problem okay so that's kind of a systematic approach 
If I was doing this on a vehicle, one of the ways that I might do, because because I'm here, here is the, the load devices, I would probably check the ground side of the circuit, so battery negative side of the circuit, and the positive side of the circuit. So think about checking this entire thing. So I would come here, red closest to battery positive, and black closest to ground, okay? And then I would eliminate, that would eliminate then, there might be multiple components that uh, before I get to ground. So that would tell me my ground side is good. And I could come here on my power side. So same thing, I'm gonna go black meter lead here, okay? And red meter lead all the way back to the positive terminal of the battery. So what this tells me is now I might go into the dash and, and, and look at the switches that are in there, but now I know that my fault is occurring here on the positive side of the circuit rather than on the ground side of the circuit. And in this specific circuit, don't forget about the wire that's connecting these two together, right? I would want to perform a voltage drop test on there as well. So let me run through that one more time. So I do my voltage drop test on the load. I determine I've got a problem. I like to start on the ground side, so I'm going to go here to here, and I say the ground side is good. Okay, then I'm going to come on my positive side, so this is battery positive. That's going to be from this point here all the way back to the positive terminal of the battery. This 8.43 volts is an indication that my problem is between here and here. So now I can start individually checking the nodes. So then I would check this node. No, I would check this node. Yeah, that's the node. And because I already know my values here, I can know that this, this component right here is the one that's a problem. So hopefully this helps you to see the value in doing voltage drop tests. So number one is a recap. We're, we're not using the battery of the multimeter, which is significantly smaller than the source battery that we would find on a vehicle. The output voltage uh, of the meter when measuring resistance was around 2.5 volts, right? If I'm measuring the resistance of an LED, there'll be another video that talks about how LEDs um, act a little bit differently uh, than normal uh, devices. But that LED, I'm not going to be able to accurately measure that resistance. Also notice that when I performed that voltage drop test, I didn't really disconnect parts of the circuit. Could either back probe into the connector or there's other methods that you can utilize. So once you understand the concept of voltage drop, it then becomes apparent that it's a lot easier to be able to um, do perform a voltage drop test over the other tests that you might perform.